Hi everybody, today I'm going to explain maximal clicks with the brown curve brush algorithm. You can find the Java implementations on my website www.algos.org. Clicks are complete subgraphs of a graph. Or in an undirected graph, the subset of its vertices is that every two vertices in the subset are connected by an edge. Maximal clicks is a click that cannot be extended by including any more adjacent vertices. If it's not contained in any other complete subgraph of G, it's a maximal click. For example, this graph below, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is a maximal click. 2, 4, 5 is a maximal click. 5 and 7 is a maximal click of two vertices. If you add 4 to the subset of 5 and 7, it's no longer a click. So 5 and 7 is a maximal click. Similarly, 4 and 6 is a maximal click. Now let's see the relationship between independent sets and click. More importantly, in this independent maximal independent sets and maximal clicks. Independent set is given an indirected graph G V E. An independent set is a subset of nodes U, a subset of V, so that no two nodes in U are adjacent. An independent set is maximal if no nodes can be added to the set. For example, in the figure below, figure one is a bipartite graph. Here 1, 2 and 3 form an independent set. No nodes are adjacent. Similarly, 4, 5, 6 is an independent set. They are also maximal. For example, if we add 4 to the subset 1, 2, 3, it no longer is an independent set. Now let's go for the definition of a complement of a graph. Complement of a graph G V is a graph G prime V so there are no two vertices are adjacent if in G prime if and only if they are not adjacent in G. So for the figure 1, the complement is in figure 2. Now we have an interesting observation here that 1, 2 and 3 are independent sets in the original graph G. Then 1, 2 and 3 become clicks in its complement. And not only that, 1, 2 and 3 are maximum independent set. 1, 2 and 3 in the complement become maximal clicks. Similarly, 4, 5, 6 original are independent sets in the complement figure 2. 4, 5, 6 are maximal clicks. And the reverse is also true. If figure 2 was the original graph, then figure 1 would be the complement. And 1, 2, and 3 in the original graph are maximal clicks. Then in its complement, 1, 2, and 3 are maximal independent set. What this means is that if we have an optimized or an efficient algorithm to find maximum independent sets, then we can find maximal clicks. All you need to do is transform the graph to, origin, to its complement and find maximum independent sets there. In the original graph, the same subset will become maximal clicks. And the, and the reverse is also true. If you have an official algorithm to find maximal clicks, we can find maximal independent sets too. Now, like in anything, we can find a brute force method for finding a maximal click. The first thing is we generate all non empty subsets of graph G, V, E. There are possible two raised to n minus 1 subsets, so a large number of subsets. For each subset, we check if it's a click, then remove non maximal clicks, there's a proper subset of larger clicks. For example, this graph, we need to first find all the subsets. Some of the subsets are listed here sub 1, sub 2, sub 3 and sub 4 and so on. Next we need for each subset check if it's a click. For example if for in the figure for sub 2 figure if we need to find if it's a click we need to check node 0 see if it's adjacent to every other node in the subset which is 1 and 2 then check node 2 see if it's adjacent to node 1 and so on. We need to do this for all the subsets. Then we remove non maximal clicks that are proper subsets of larger clicks. If we take sub 1 as the first subset then it's contained in subset 2 so we can remove subset 1 we don't require subset we don't need to take subset 1 to further considerations it's not a non maximal click now the problem is it's time consuming however we can optimize this brute force model a little further for example if in if in take instead of the subset of all nodes we take subset of the edges the subset 4 will disappear because there is no edge between 2 and 3. Then we need to aim to have maximal complete subgraphs. Explain this further. Optimization 1, subset of edges. Subset 4 will disappear. 
no longer in consideration. Then aim to have maximum complete subgraphs. Take subset 1. We try to add as many nodes into the subset as possible. Let's take node 2. Node 2, if you add node 2 to subset 1, it still forms a complete subgraph, a little bigger subset, complete subgraph. But if you add node 3, it no longer is a complete subgraph. So we can only add 2. So subset 1 becomes subset 2, so subset 1 no longer is in consideration. So now we have actually found two maximal clicks. Subset 2 and subset 3 are maximal clicks for the graph shown. Let's go to the Brown Curve or Shalgotham version 1. Version 2 is a little bit optimized. But this Brown Curve is much optimized than the Brute Force algorithm along with the optimization that I had shown before. Brown Curve or Shalgotham takes in three sets R is equal to empty initially, P is equal to V, the set of nodes of the graph G, and X is equal to empty. Now, Brown Curve Bosch is a recursive algorithm, takes in three parameters P, R, and X. The first step is determining condition if P union X is empty, then report R is a maximal click. Else, step 4 for each vertex V and P do, call Brown Curve recursively, with P is equal to P intersection neighbors of V, R is equal to R union V, and X is equal to X intersection neighbors of V. While returning, P, remove P, remove V from P, and add V to the set X, X union V. Now what are the three sets used for? If you see in step 2, we report R is a maximal click. All the nodes in R are reported as maximal click. So R possibly holds all the nodes in a click. Now what does P hold? If you see in step 5, P will be the intersection of all neighbors of V. V is the one which we are adding to R. So, iteratively, P will hold all the neighbor, all the nodes which are adjacent to every vertex in R. So, P will be actually the candidate nodes for further adding to R so as to form a bigger or maximal click too. So, X contains nodes already in some click or processed to remove duplicate clicks. If you see step 1, if x is not empty, we cannot report it as a maximal click. Similarly, at step 7, we are adding v to x. This is done after we have processed v in certain in step 5, recursively down the hierarchy. So, what happens recursively down the hierarchy is that either we have found a maximal click using, using v, or it's no longer or, or it's a duplicate of an already found click. So, we, if we add it to x, that means is that we can, we do not, we should not use it for in further finding other clicks because a maximal click with that particular vertex v has already been found. So to use to remove duplicate clicks or non-maximal clicks. Let's give a, explain this further with an example. Let's take this graph, starting with R is equal to empty, P is equal to the, all the vertices in the graph G, X is empty. This is a recursive call, so I'm going to show the timeline or the call hierarchy. For example, a next uh, uh, iteration, we have R is equal to 1, P is equal to 2,3. 2,3 is actually the neighbors of 1. The, it's the union of, sorry, the intersection of neighbors of 1 with the original P. The original P was 1, 2, 3, 4, neighbors of 1 are 2 and 3, union is P is equal to 2, 3, X is empty. And now further call, we take R is equal to 1, 2 now, neighbors of 1, 2 is 3, X is empty, now R is 1, 2, 3, P is empty, X is empty, so P union X is empty, terminates, now we need to report R is maximal, so 1, 2, 3 is the maximal click. And now we actually, we are going from here. From here we are actually recursing back to here. We are taken one. Sorry, recursing back to, uh, we are recursing back to here. We are taken one comma two. Now we have to take one comma three. Two, two was into consideration. As you seen in the algorithm, once we return, we have to add the vertex V to the X set X. Set X has two. We've taken consideration vertex 3 now, R is 1, 2, 3, P is empty, 
because 3 the neighbors of 3 and 1 comma 3 is an empty set so x is 2 p union x is not empty so it cannot be reported as maximal it's actually a duplicate because if we if we take it to consideration 1 comma 3 comma 2 it's already been reported here so this nodes which are in r is not maximal and the maximal is with 2 but it's already been reported earlier so we ignore it or call it duplicate now here we are going back to this step here we are taking r is equal to 1 now we have to take r is equal to 2 but since uh, we have returned from here x should now be equal to 1 p is equal to neighbors of 2 which is 3 and 4 similarly we go forward 2 and 3 p is empty x is equal to 1 union is not empty duplicate similarly now here we have r is equal to 2 comma 4 r is equal to 2 comma 4 instead of 2 comma 3 we are taking 2 comma 4 now p is empty x is also empty so report 2 comma 4 is maximal now we come back to the same step here in fact here it's 2 we have taken consideration 2 now we are taking consideration 3 x is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 P is empty, P con union X is not empty, ignore it. Similarly, R is equal to 4, this is the last step. Now, these are the actual steps which, ha which, which you have taken into consideration in the algorithm. We have reported two clicks, 1, 2, and 3, and 2, comma 4. These are two maximal clicks. Now, burn curve algorithm simplified. First, we take any single vertex in a graph as a subset. We use a set R. And second, add as many vertices to the subset which are adjacent to every other vertex in it as possible. Now, which are adjacent to every other vertex in it is all the neighbors of those nodes which are in R. Those will be in set P. Set R will hold the vertex which will be added as a next possible candidate in the maximal click. Step 3, if subset is not already reported, report as maximal click. We do step 2 as much as possible. In step 3, if step set is not already reported, report as maximal click. Use a set X. If X is not empty, we cannot report it as a maximum. In step 4, report the vertex used in step 1 from further considerations. Repeat step 1 to step 4 for all vertexes in graph. Now we can optimize this bone curvature algorithm further if you have this, if you understand the simple observation. For every vertex, either U Vertex U or its non neighbors will be in click, not both. Let's take an example. If you take one as vertex U, then the neighbors of vertex U1, 2, and 3 need not be taken into consideration at the same level at which we are considering vertex 1. Because once you select vertex 1, 1 is in P, and further down, one is in R, I, I'm sorry, one is in R, and further down the hierarchy, two and three will be added because two and three will be our neighbors of one. So two and three will be added, two and three will be considered, and will be returned as the maximal click. But in the same level, when you're considering one, the first level, assuming it's the first level, we do not consider two and three. But we have to consider four because four, uh, four can form a, another click. Along, uh, four can form along another click not including one so in set p if we can iterate over all the vertices which are in u and the non neighbors of u that is set p is equal to p remove the neighbors of u vertex u is known as a pivot element it's known as a pivot element for max optimization pick vertex u with the largest degree in p union x if we had selected four instead of one we, had, we would have removed only two not two and three if we had selected one so it's the best for max optimization. We we need to select the one the vertex with the max number of neighbors. Initially, p union x will be empty. So the you select the vertex with the max number of neighbors. That is one. U will be expanded with its neighbors in inner recursive calls. This is how I explained before. Now, bone curve algorithm version two with pivot. Everything is the same except for we are initializing as empty p is equal to v x is equal to empty everything is the same except for step 4 choose the pivot vertex u 
in P union X has the vertex with the highest number of neighbors in P. And step 5 for each vertex V in P minus the neighbors of U. All the vertices V and U accept the neighbors of U. From this we can see that we are actually reducing number of calls of Brown color brush. All the neighbors of U. Assuming there are two neighbors of U. These two neighbors will not be called here. So we are reducing it by two. And this goes on iteratively. For every vertex we are doing the same. For every, every time we come in the loop, we are removing the neighbors of U. So this reduces, reduces it by a lot. So we are optimizing it by a lot by reducing the number of bond curves calls, recursive calls. So for the same example, for this example here, for the first example which we have actually checked, Let's see the one, let's see the number of calls without pivot. See that these are the number of recursive calls or number of recursive levels without pivot. We see here that since we are calling 4, we have found a maximal click with 4 and 6, we are still calling 6 here, which is not required. Similarly, we found 5 here, we are still calling 5 and 7, we are still calling 7. These are kind of redundant calls, you know, not required. So with pivot, See the number of differences, number of number of calls have reduced dramatically, I guess by 50%. So when you have called 4 here, we are no longer calling 6 in the same level in fact. We we'll check the same level, 4 is, uh, we are called 4, we need not call with 6. A pivot is say 5 here, pivot is say, pivot is 4. If pivot is 4, we are no longer calling with 6 any longer. If pivot is 2. Since pivot is 2, 1, 3 will no longer, will, will not be called, will not, lo, will no longer be used in the main for loop, in fact. So number of calls are actually reduced by a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye.